I love the story of the prodigal son because the prodigal son reminds me that it's not the beginning of the story that's important. It's not the middle of the story that's the most important, but rather it's the end of the story that's the reality of what we need to focus in on. The prodigal son came back to the father. The prodigal son came home. That's the end of the story. And we're told some other things too about the other brother, but the point is this. The end of the story of your life is the most important part. You might go off on tangents. You might fall down at times. You may stumble, bumble, and crumble, and you know, build kingdoms and have them washed away and destroyed by the storms of life. But the end of your life is the most important aspect of your life. Because if you were found in the faith at the end of your life, then you have proven that God has kept you and is presenting you faultless before the Father with exceeding joy. You see, that's our race that we're running. When you're in a race, nobody cares whether you ran the race, you know, slow, fast, quick, beginning, end, or whatever. They care if you finished it because no one keeps track of those that didn't finish the race. As a matter of fact, if you look at race results, it will always tell you on it the time of the person that finished. If they didn't finish, they're not really recorded, are they? Or at least says something like NF, you know, didn't finish, or DF, or something. Same thing is true about, you know, most other aspects of life. If you don't finish the job, you don't get paid. You get paid according to if you do the work. That's what God is doing with us. He wants you to finish your life the same way you began it. Oh, sure, it's nice and exciting to see all these wonderful people that I see come to the Lord. <gasps> wow, did you see, you know, so-and-so, you know, that came to the Lord? Well, what are they doing today? Oh, they're not walking with God anymore. Wow, are they still saved? <laughs> Good question. We'll see, won't we? You won't like the results. We hear stories about recently, and I was amazed by it, by this whosoever's big deal, some guy that, you know, got saved, you know, and it was like, oh, it was all of a sudden, the, you couldn't get enough of whosoever's, and it was like some big flash pan, and all of a sudden he was like the hero, and I kept warning people, saying, be careful. Every time you take a baby Christian that's only been around for a little while, and you make them into a superstar, just like Bob Dylan, I'm sorry, they may not be around long enough to know whether their faith is true or they're just inspired by the feelings. And sadly, as I watched this big megastar decide he wanted to go back to his buddies because he enjoyed what he had with them as much as he enjoyed being with God. And I thought, he won't be around much longer because, no offense, if he's a prodigal, then I hope he got a foundation in the Lord and in the Word of God. But the truth is he went on circuit doing a lot of evangelism, and I'm not so sure he got discipled. We'll see. Maybe he'll make it. Maybe he won't. But you see, the end of this life is going to be more important than that one flash pan moment where he said, Oh, yes, I accept Jesus, you know, and went around on circuit, you know, doing his mega ministry thing. Those that have been around a long time, we see them come and go. We see the people who make the choice to follow Jesus. It costs them something because God says, whom has been, who, he whom has been forgiven much loveth much, but he who has been forgiven little loveth little. And we do know that based upon what Jesus said of the, the seeds, you know, there's some seed that you know, produces you know, good fruit, but there's also some seed that once the cares of the world gets involved, chokes out the very life of the plant. And it perishes. It's not how you began that's important. I don't care how you got saved. I don't care whether you went through an altar call, whether you got slunked and dunked, or whether you got sprinkled on at birth, or whether your grandmother prayed for you, or whether you're, you prayed, or whether you watched TV, or however you did it on the internet, or you know, at a great crusade, or whether you're in a mega church, or a mini church, or whether you're you know, up and down sideways, or wherever you are. I don't care. I don't care how you start. That doesn't mean anything to me. What I care about is how you finish. Are you becoming more in love with God? Are you devoting yourself to a certain amount of time of 
learning to recognize some of the things that are happening in the world so that you don't get deceived by them? Are you beginning to appreciate your study and the reading or just reading of the Word of God so that you won't be deceived by other people coming along and involving you in something that's not beneficial to you, that doesn't bring you closer to God in some personal way? That I care about because you see, the time is coming when while we're in the light, we can walk in the light, and while it's daytime, we can work in the day. But Jesus said there's coming a time at night when we cannot work, when the works of darkness would be made manifest, and they would take over, and evil would flourish, and the violent would take the kingdom of God by force, even as they have since the beginning of the kingdom age, so to speak, or this kingdom time that we're preaching the kingdom age to come. Jesus warned us, we have very little time left to share the gospel, to preach, to disciple the nations, to bring them to a place of realization that deception is coming. And part of it is being sent by God. If God sends a deception, how do you know you won't be deceived? I don't. I don't. It's not that clear in scripture. So, the point is, how you finish your life is more important than how you began it, but how you develop it is very important. You need to continue in the word, steadfast in prayer, exhorting one another, encouraging one another in psalms and psalms, psalms and songs and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart. As we see these things getting worse and worse, as we see the violence growing, as we see deceptions flowing, as we see people being misled, as we see people, even our own closest friends sometimes going off on tangents, sometimes not coming back from them. Be mindful. Be careful. You may be one of those that's just one day short of being saved, meaning that you enter into heaven. Don't be that short that you, after having preached the gospel, you be a castaway. As Paul said, he prays he be not that person, but that having done the work of God, he might receive a crown unto eternal life. We are made partakers of Jesus if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Hebrews 3, 14. It is the last step that wins. And there is no place in the Pilgrim's Progress where so many dangers lurk as the region that lies hard by the portals of the celestial city. It was there that Doubting Castle stood. It was there that the enchanted ground lured the tired traveler to fatal slumber. It is when heaven's heights are full in view that hell's gates is most persistent and full of deadly peril. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. So run that you may obtain. The problem of getting great things from God is being able to hold on for the last half hour. I have seen how fast and how easy it is for people to get misled for people to get distracted, for people to be attracted to sin and get involved in it. I know because I do. I'm one of those. If I'm not constantly watching myself, mindful of the ch spiritual checks, working my salvation out with fear and trembling, knowing that, hey, at any moment I could stumble and fall and take a lot of people with me, believe me, I'm more than willing to sin just like any other person. Because sometimes sin is good. At least for that moment. But you see, death works in me at the point of sin and continues in me till I'm forgiven. So I don't want that to extend outward beyond anything else except for me to for be forgiven immediately for any sin I might commit each and every day. So I pray for God's forgiveness every night. I pray for God to lead me every day. I pray that God will take you all the way unto the day of salvation when we can stand before God himself and declare our testimony that Jesus has loved us and brought us to this day that we can hug and love the Father then stand in fear and awe of judgment that he will render upon us. Make sure you be found in the faith. Make sure your hope of your calling is steadfast and attainable unto what you're doing and not being misled into being construed in some other way than to be found faithful to the Lord Jesus himself. Ask him to show you what you need to do. Ask him to reveal to you what you might want to learn. Involve other people in your life that you might be encouraged by. 
but sometimes exhorted by, maybe even discipled by, maybe even sometimes chastised from. Listen attentively to the things of the Spirit, because God is taking us home soon. And the race is almost over, so it's getting worse. It's getting harder. It's getting ready for that last kick out when the marathon runner must run the last few miles on sheer determination and will of God because there's no other way that you'll make it. You don't have the strength to do what God has required of you to do. But as long as you rely on that ounce of Holy Spirit you have, that gallon of joy that God has given you, that manifold peace that God will continue to present to you if you would just yield to Him, then not only will you make it, but you'll be received into the kingdom of God with great joy and rejoicing in heaven. For all the angels will stand and applaud you on the day that you were presented before God as perfect and as safe.